Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Modern Media Mogul Show. My name is Kirk Barbera, and today I wanted to show you the very first film. Now, you may wonder, who cares about the very first film ever made? But I think that this is an important thing if you want to understand where we are going with media. Now, whenever I say media, people look at me a little confused. So I wanted to kind of clarify. When I say media, I mean video content, shooting stuff on a camera or your iPhone. I mean audio content, putting it up on a podcast, recording with mics like this, with mixers that I've shown in other videos, or written content. That's media. Media is plural for medium. And the medium you know, if you think of like a copper wire is a medium between electrical currents or something or for an electrical current, when you're talking about mediums or media is the plural, we're talking about getting an idea from the inside of a head of somebody and somehow out into other people's uh, minds. Now, to understand where we are with social media, I wanted to go back to 1895 and give you a brief little side-by-side -side comparison of 1895 uh, and 1995, and then going forward, what, uh, what happened in the history of film and what has happened in the history of this new media, this social media, or the internet, and how that's changed everything, and why that is relevant to you as a business owner if you're a business owner. And if you're not, if you're a content creator, it could help you in understanding what's going on and where things are probably going. So the uh, real quick, just a, um, let me pop this up here. Okay. So I want to give you, a, like I said, a brief perspective on where we are and where we have come from. So this is a kinetoscope. Uh, this was invented by Edison in 1861. Now, a kinetoscope is just a is kind of a, a cheap little amusement that there used to be parlors of this where there were several of these in a row. And one person at a time can look down into this little mechanism here, this machine, and pictures would move. Now, that's a phenomenal creation. Pictures in themselves, being able to take a photo of something and grafting it on there uh, is a big, big thing um, because, you know, in and of itself, but then being able to make that image move is phenomenal. And to do it without, you know, flipping through it, like one of those flip books that make, you know, images move. So to do it on its own is also a great invention that changed the way media is distributed. So this is a kinetoscope. Now this was 1861, but in, 1895 is when the big invention really came that, that took over the world. And that is the cinematograph Lumiere. The Lumiere brothers uh, in Paris showed the first projected film. Now, I want to show you what that film looks like. It's going to be over here on the right-hand side. This is the exciting, amazing, incredible first film ever shown to an audience. And keep in mind, People have never seen movement on film before or in other than real life. They've only seen it in real life. They've never seen a picture that moves. So this was a dramatic thing. So check it out. It's 47 seconds. It will blow you away. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. What are they doing? Someone's going to get them. Ah! Look at all those people. This is dangerous. Something's going to blow up. Something's got to happen. It can't just be you know people walking out of a factory. Oh, there's a dog. Look at those ladies. A lot of ladies. Look at those hats. Mm. Some dudes. Some guy yelling very pontifically. <laughs> Pontificating. Look at that cool bike. Man. Some more bikes. Some more bikes. Some dudes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a dog. And that's it. Boom. <laughs> that is, oh, goodbye, Joe Rogan. That is the first movie ever shown. Woo! How exciting is that? <laughs> um, but 
it took the world by storm. Now, some of the other films that the Lumiere brothers made, it looks like the next one pops up here, is, uh, you know, trains moving. That's, you know, just trains moving. But this was so phenomenally, you know, world changing. And it was so dramatically different for people that just to give you an idea, when they did a, a filming of, when they did a projection of people watching the, uh, when they do a projection of, thank you, Marco, that was a ton of people, yes. When they did a projection of people, of the train coming toward the camera, and they projected that into a screen, so the, the train came toward people in the screen, people went nuts. People screamed, people started sweating, women fainted. I mean, it was intense. It was a big deal because again, nobody had ever seen moving pictures. So this was a big deal in 1895. Now in um, 1995, another invention. So we're looking at 1895 and then we have 1995. We have two different eras happening side by side. We're going to look at them side by side. And what happened in 1995? In 1995, thank you. Media is definitely evolving, Marco. Yeah, love it. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you. Uh, in 1995, a nerdy guy put on to the computer or onto the desk of every American and most people in the West, a desktop computer. This is Windows 95. Now again, think about it. In 1895, 100 years earlier, was the first motion picture, but the kinetoscope was invented in 1861. Same exact thing happened in 1995. In 1960s, you had the creation of the internet, but it was mostly used by professors or government officials or mega corporations to just communicate one, one on one uh, across the Atlantic or from New York to California or something. So it wasn't really used on a mass scale. So the internet, as far as we are aware of it and know of it, really was invented in 1995, just like movies were really invented in 1895. That's the date to remember, 1995 for the internet, uh, 1895 for um, the films, for moving pictures. So the next stage of films was a, let me show you this again, was the Nickelodeon era. Not Nickelodeon, like Nick at Night or Nickelodeon when I was a kid in the you know late 90s or something, uh, or I guess I said mid-90s. Mid that Nickelodeon is kind of a throwback to the first film projection studio here. And this is where films really started to be distributed and manufactured en masse. Like it really became, started to come into its own. It's called Nickelodeon because you gave a nickel and you went to an Odeon, which is like a Greek root for projecting a screen, projecting uh, this, your screen. And that's, or just projection, I guess, is probably more accurate. But that's the Nickelodeon. And in the Nickelodeons of this era, you get um, basically a whole bunch of short little films put together. So one similarity between the 1907 era and the 2007 or 2018 era is this advent of these short little vignettes put together. So if you know anything about um, Vine, these little three-second videos, that's not very dissimilar to what's, what happened in Nickelodeon. So, the, you know, and the same thing with like, they've got into two, three-minute videos or uh, motion pictures, but it was very, very short is the point. So the same thing, so it's very similar. The reason this is interesting to me anyway is that, what you see here is the exact same thing that happened. And let me give you an example of how um, similar these eras were. So in, um, I'm going to read you a newsletter, newspaper article, not an article, just like a, a quote from it. Um, where to go? Okay. Throughout the whole period, and this was in 1909, throughout the whole period, the moving pictures suffered attacks from the pulpit and from the yellow press. Think fake news. <laughs> Same thing. Opportunists found it a way to target, to get public attention. Think about uh, 
opportunists today who try to get public attention by being a provocateur like Milo Yiannopoulos and all these people that are going out there trying to anger people just to get some attention on movies. Same thing happened in 1905. I mean, it's amazing. The more you read history, the more you see that we're just repeating ourselves. And this will help us in seeing the future. Um, you know, and and found it to get attention. And juvenile delinquents discovered it was a useful claim that they got the idea for wrongdoing from doing it, something they did on TV. Same thing today. Oh, it wasn't my fault. I saw it on television. Blame the TV. Here's another quote from 1909, a newspaper in 1909. The moving picture business occupied in public esteem, public esteem, a position so offensive, so contemptible, and in many respects so degrading that respectable people hesitated to have their names associated with it. You're still getting the same thing today where uh, respectable people don't want to be you know, associated with social media, with Facebook. Like that's only what kids do. That's not what grown people do. That's not a big deal. That's just little kids, right? It's it's some it's a cheap amusement. I am frank. This is 1906. I am frank in stating uh, that when you told a man you were uh, in the motion picture business, if you would happen to meet him on a train or anywhere, he would naturally look around and ask what that was. It was looked on with disfavor, as all types of you know uh, storefront shows at that time were shown. So the point is that this was a common view of the 1906 Nickelodeon era, just like our more modern era, just like uh, 2007 to 2018, we have the same view the same view of what's happening with media today. It's absolutely amazing how it's the same exact thing happening. Okay, so that's that's 2000, uh, that's 1907. And then, um, you know, the Nickelodeon and all the people thinking that it was a, a cheap amusement. It distracted people, it distracted the kids. It was, you know, destructive to the family values. And, you know, the only way you could use it is if you wanted to use it to, educate particularly immigrants that's what they you know mostly thought of let's bring immigrants in and teach them the american values we can show them a film and that's the best thing that we can use this cheap little amusement for and you get the same kind of thing today where it's you know especially in 2007 where the only good that can come out of it is if it's an educational value there can be no real art or you know good entertainment it's all cheap amusements you still get the same view with social media in 2007 uh, 2007 so let's go to the next era. Now, in 1914, 1918, you start getting organization of the media production of motion pictures. And that's what the, a, a Paramount, or Paramount Pictures, one of the first film studios, Universal was started in the same era. And now what's really interesting in our era today, in 2014, 18 era, is you're now getting the same thing happening. You're getting uh, Adam Carolla like network. He has a whole network of podcasts. You get Gimlet Media, Pod Save America, NPR on on uh, podcast, CRTV, which is a Christian, you know, a conservative Republican network of Facebook and podcast shows that you pay a, a fee for, and you can watch all their shows. So you're getting an explosion of these kind of networks growing out there. So that's where we are now in the same exact fashion as we got the film industry happening in 1914, where you start to get an organization of the manufacturing and the production of videos, or I should say motion pictures. Now, what happened next? The next phase was 19, you know, 18 to 1927, you could say. Now, what happened in that era? You basically get film coming of its own as an art form. And by the time you get to 1939, it has been accepted fully as a complete art form. Um, you know, you have uh, Academy Awards have been going on for 15, 10 years or so. You have Gone with the Wind happening in 1939. And, you know, a whole slew of films that are starting to make people respect film as an art. And it becomes a mainstream. Now, we're only in the 
the equivalent of 2018 is the 1914, 1918 area. So I wanted to tell you that little you know, history there to give you a, just a slight little idea of the, the, how new all of this is. We're at phase one of what's going to happen with new media. And the question is, where are we going to be you know, in 10 years with media? Things happen faster nowadays, so maybe we're going to be in a better era uh, in the you know 2018 or 2028 field. So if you're interested in creating content, if you're interested in growing your business, you need to get into the content creation game. Now, there's one fact that is critically different about the 1895 to 1939 era that is that makes it all the difference in the world from the 1995 to the 2039 era, the era that we're in the middle of this massive change. And that difference is the cost of production and distribution. So one of the inventions I did not mention in, 19, in 2007 that changed everything is the iPhone. Now, what the iPhone allows you to do, of course, is it allows you to create and distribute with the same product to 2 billion people. Steve Jobs in 2007 put a radio, a television, and a newspaper in 2 billion pockets. And not just a radio, television, newspaper, but a radio transmitter and a radio receiver, a TV transmitter and a TV or broadcaster and a, and a, you know, a TV camera broadcaster and a TV itself, like a receiver. And the same thing with it put a printing press as well as a printing distributor. <laughs> so he did that. There are now over 2 billion uh, smartphones in the world. I think there's more than that at this point. So the big difference is that when you look at film costs, starting in 1895, they were actually relatively inexpensive given what it takes, you know, given the, the time period. So lots of new, uh, you know, poor immigrants coming to America, for instance, would get started with their business in film because it was relatively inexpensive and easy to get into comparatively. Now, in the um, in our era, the same thing is true, except even more. Now, from 1895 going up, what you start to see is film processes getting better, and film is very expensive. To make moving pictures work on screen, you need to record, you know, think about taking pictures at 24 frames per second. That means, think of it as like, if you used to use those old Polaroid cameras from back in the day or, you know, in the 90s, you used a normal film camera, that would be a full roll of film every second, which, you know, this was like nine bucks to, um, to make that, to expose that, 90, that uh, 24 frames, 24 shot camera in film was the same thing, except it wasn't quite the same price, but it was still very expensive. So the point is that film costs started going up. Cameras started getting more elaborate and expensive. Uh, sets started getting more expensive. And then distribution started getting more expensive. So to distribute a film, what do you have to do? You have to make dupes or duplicates. So you have to, you know, if I make a two-hour film uh, about a man and his cheese dog, uh, <laughs> uh, there are such things as cheese dogs, look it up. If I do that for two hours, then what I need to do is, um, th then I, I, I have to take that film. And if I want to get it into a thousand theaters, I have to make a thousand prints at once. And then you put all of them out there and you sell each of those, or you can sell and do it in phases. You can create 300 prints and then put them in 300 or one area and then move those to another area. That was a common tactic, especially in the early eras, they would kind of release them in sections. But the point is that, <clears throat> That is a um, expensive process. Now, as a business owner, this was relevant to you too because you had no access. If, unless you're a mega corporation who could 
you know, do deals with business, uh, with film businesses to put product place, which is a big thing that's been around for forever. You could not afford to do this at all. Even in the 80s, it usually would cost about $10,000 to $20,000 just to produce a cheesy little film that, or a little commercial you would do locally. But again, this all changed in 2007 with the advent of the iPhone. Because now you can simply get a tripod, hold up your phone, and record and distribute it in the same platform for very little cost. So the difference between the 1895 to 1939 era, excuse me, 1895 to 1939, that era, versus the 1995 to 2039 era, the era we're still in, of course, is that so far our film costs are going down, that products are becoming better. I'm talking on a $50 webcam. You can you know, create little simple little videos with this. You can, you can use an iPhone. There's little rigs you can use to use an iPhone. So people are coming up with more and more ways to make video production costs go down and distribution costs go down. And that's what's really critical is right now we're at a juncture where anybody can create good content or any content. And that I think is actually a good thing. So if you're a business owner, you need to be creating content that your customers will enjoy or that people that you want to talk to might enjoy. And some of the things that they might enjoy is, you know, a simple one is educating them on your product or on your service, but it could also be the story of how your product is made. You know, if you sell beer, you can talk about the story of how your beer is made or even better, you can do what Gary Vaynerchuk did and you could try a whole bunch of wines or beer and just talk about them and be honest, you know, and don't, if you hate something, even if you sell it, talk about how much you hate it and why you hate it and go into that. Or you can even do talk show format where you could just have someone on the show is very inexpensive, you know, put them on there and then have them, uh, you know, have them talk about their, whatever it is that they do. <laughs> and that is a very helpful, um, that, that could be a very effective tool to talk to people, to grow your audience and to get better at creating content. So where I think film and where I think media is going is I believe that the future of media is we are going to see two things happen. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but we're going to see the rise of new, you know, like Netflix is the first type of this, but I think you're going to see in Facebook or in other competitors, new content uh, creators and distributors. So just like you saw MGM and, and Warner Brothers in the 30, or 20s and 30s pop up, you're going to see these new mega media companies come up but you might even see a lot more of them. So instead of having four or five, you might have 50, right? Like maybe on a smaller scale, going more niche because that's one of the things um, we're having a little bit more democratization with this. But the other advantage is that because this is so affordable that I see more companies, whether they're multi-billion dollar companies or you know mom and pop shops, million dollar companies, more companies are gonna be creating Good content. Not everyone's going to create good content, but some people are going to create some decent content that will help grow their business. So that means we're going to be getting, you know, TV shows, maybe little scripts, movies. I think we're going to see radio podcasts, like a radio show, uh, you know, like old time radio in the 1930s, which was an, a teleplay or a radio play. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. It's going to grow and grow and grow. And if you're in the business world, you should take into consideration and think about how you can get creative about creating content for your audience. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that first movie ever made. And I want to know what films, what stories, what shows are you going to create?